My name is Mama Queen, and I just performed a little part of my favorite song, I am what I am. But... <laughs> what am I? Am I the fantasy? I am a drag queen. And drag, the term, comes from Shakespearean times when women weren't allowed by men to be on stage. So the most feminine men played the female parts, dressed resembling a girl. Luckily, times have changed, and so has drag. Drag nowadays is an art form, the art of transformation. And anybody can do drag. Is there, by any chance, a drag artist in the audience here today? <laughs> My drag daughter is over here, but I asked her not to say anything. No, there's no drag artist in the audience today. <gasps> so there's a difference between you, the audience, and me, the performer on stage, the drag queen, me, in my full fantasy, and you, in your full reality? <laughs> or is there no difference between you and me? So how did I become a drag queen and why Mama Queen? Ever since I can remember, and probably because my mom was pregnant from my little sister who's two years younger than me, I've had the desire to be pregnant and carry a baby in my belly. But because people told me, you are born as a boy, so you can never be a mother, you can only be a father. Through the art of drag, you can be whatever you want and make your fantasy a reality. So I chose the name Mama Queen and became the mother of the beautiful house of holographic hosts. And I have now, yes, I have now six beautiful children that call me mother and a lot of other followers that also call me mother, mama. <laughs> <laughs> yes. So when people ask me when I started doing drag, I usually say around eight years ago on my 25th birthday in 2015. But in reality, do you remember when you were a little kid and you went to a birthday party or to a special day at school and you could dive into the dresser box and take out a costume and, you know, do you remember? Yes, so we can all remember. As kids, we all possess the ability to transform ourselves and to tap into the fantasy. We don't live by the pre-written script that society has written for us. But I like to dress up so much uh, in my feminine character when I was a kid that it worried both of my parents and they took me to get professional help. When I was seven years old, my worried parents, they took me to the GGZ uh, and there they advised my parents to go with me to the Genderpoli in Utrecht, where they did a new research, never been done before, to see if transness was scientifically possible and provable in a body. So I remember going to this place with the car, in the back of the car, um, arriving in this big space, the academic hospital for youth psychiatry. We went through a glass door, upstairs and waited in a waiting room where I played with this uh, a toy, a puzzle with farm animals. And then the researchers came, took me with them, and they put me in a room around this age. Uh, my mom made this dress for me, by the way, super cute. But the researchers took me to uh, a room. I sit behind a computer and I had to chat and talk to a real boyish boy. And they would see how I would, as a feminine boy, respond to that. And while doing so, they made me eat tiny pieces of salt, so I get a lot of saliva and had to spit into a tube. They tested my blood, but they also put me in this room where I had to wait, and this room was filled with toys. Pink on one side with a lot of girls' toys, blue on the other side with a lot of boys' toys, and I loved it. I went to the girls' side, played with a Barbie and a My Little Pony, and there was a big mirror, and I looked at myself in the big mirror. I loved, I loved it. But later, the researchers came back, and they told me that this mirror was not a mirror, it was only a mirror to me, and it was a window to them, and they were looking at me from behind this window to see what I was doing, 
to see which toys I would play with, and I felt betrayed. I felt like a guinea pig, and I didn't want to be there anymore. So from that moment on, I became the boy with the identity, gender identity crisis through my childhood, my primary school, my secondary school, and even while studying fashion, I was always the person with the gender identity crisis. It was only when I studied in uh, Rotterdam at the Academy for Applied Art Science, Willem de Koning, in Rotterdam, where I did a minor in critical studies, identity politics, intersectionality, and queer and gender studies, where I learned about the term non-binary, not solely male or female. My worldview changed 180 degrees, and I suddenly wasn't the person anymore with the gender identity crisis. I realized the society around me was divided into this binary system that I just didn't understand. So I started doing drag to deal with this reality and tap into my fantasy. My sister, who I mentioned earlier in my mother's womb, grew up to be an amazing support system. I could always play with her. She went through my whole gender identity crisis with me and always got my back. She's now a police officer. And while she was studying to become a police officer, she uh, had an open day and invited me to see where she was taking her education. So I went there with the train. I don't know why I'm walking, but I went with the train. My sister picked me up from the station and we drove to the academy. When we were at the academy, my sister changed into her drag, her, uh, her uniform. And while I was waiting for her to come back, there was another officer who approached me and said out of the blue, how did you get here? So I was like, ah, by train. And she was like, no, like, why, why are you here? It's like, oh, because my sister is taking this, her education here. She becomes a police officer. And then this officer made a remark about, yeah, I don't really understand this whole LGBT. Uh, I think it's all unnecessary, all these labels. And, uh, and I said to her, I am one of those letters. And I'm really happy that I know that I'm one of those letters. And I would like to end this conversation here. Isn't this person, a police officer, supposed to keep me safe? Well, thank God for people like my sister. We drag queens and drag artists and trans people, especially black and persons of color, have been visibly and fighting for equality throughout history. And yes, we do add more letters to the queer enumeration, but this is because we understand the importance of the representation and of the, all the different identities. Yes. <sighs> Why not just add the S from straight to this whole enumeration? I mean, I could answer this. It's because straight people are not being discriminated against. And, but I mean, just to make a suggestion, we are all equal, so we should just add this S. We moved on from Shakespearean times, where women weren't allowed to be on stage. We also moved on from a pink and blue society. I often, when I'm in drag, receive these strange compliments. For example, oh, must be so nice that you can be yourself like that. And I wonder, can't we all be ourselves like that? And wasn't the reason for me to get in drag because I couldn't be myself, so how? Mm, right? And also, you are so brave to be yourself like that. Which makes me wonder, so people do understand that it takes a lot of guts, and it's a lot of risk for violence if you are visibly queer, like me, right? So one night, with my drag daughter, I came back from a booking. We looked like we were working in the red light district, so a little less clothing, you know? We were feeling ourselves, and we were, let's go to the night store and grab ourselves some wine. While being in the night store, there were some other customers, and they made fun of us a little bit. They left the store before us, so we just grabbed ourselves a bottle of wine, went to the counter, took it outside. While we passed these people outside, they were making fun of us, throwing like tiny pieces of food at us. And while we just passed them, I told to my drag daughter, keep walking, don't look, keep walking, keep walking, don't look. They started following us and screaming at us. And the faster we walked, they just kept chasing us, screaming at us, throwing cans at us. And I told to my drag daughter at some point, run, run. They run after us. They chased us to my front door. And right before we entered our, my, my, home, they tried to kick in my front door. We pushed together, the two of us, to close the door, and luckily, the door fell in the lock. 
They kicked a couple of more times, but we were scared for our lives that these people were break into our house. A couple of days later, we went back to the same night store, and the owner of the store came to us and told to us, I witnessed what happened, but I couldn't leave my store in the middle of the night. Were you okay? We explained the situation, and he told us that whenever anything happened on the street, we could always run to the night store, go back into the back of the store, find ourselves a safe spot, and leave through the back door. And by offering us this place, the night store became a safe space, and the owner of the night store became our hero. Right now, here, when I'm on stage, I feel like I'm the hero. But on the streets, and in order for me to get... Well, right now, I did my makeup in the backstage. But usually, I do my makeup at home, and I travel in public transport to wherever I need to work. So I always say, my first gig is in the public transport, and my second gig is actually the gig I'm, I'm working for. So while, while going to my work, I get yelled at, spit on, called names, being chased, sometimes being slapped, being kicked, being pushed over. And now you might wonder, but why do you do it? Why do you dress like that? Why are you going on the street like that? I made the choice very early on to express myself fully because my dad, who's in the audience here today, told me at a very early age that I always have to choose between two evils or deny myself who I really am and dress to be safe or dress who I want to be and take the risk of external violence. So I always have to make this choice and I decided to never uh, put this violence on myself but to always be myself and be visible and therefore hopefully inspire anybody who encounters me to do the same. To be yourself fully, to dress how you want to dress and slowly but surely change the world step by step. Out of drag, when I'm not dressed like this, my name is Venus, Venus Beilefeld, and I identify as they, them. So on the 8th of March this year, um, I received my official diagnosis, gender dysphoria. And this was another turning point in my life. So I happily posted on my social media, hello, hello, lovely spirits. I received my green light officially, the gender dysphoria diagnosis. And my mom told me, but you already had this diagnosis when you were seven. <laughs> Shocker. So I didn't know, and I asked my parents if they had any official documentation uh, of this uh, diagnosis. And I read through the, the papers, and I understood that the gender healthcare uh, and the research they were doing was based on a very binary perspective. But because I was seven years old, my body and the body of my female friends was pretty much the same. And I didn't understand at that age why I couldn't have long hair or wear a fancy dress or have nail polish. And it was only in my puberty when my body started changing and my female friend's body started changing, I came to understand that, oh, society wants female bodies to become women and male bodies to become men. I never understood this, and that's why I identify as non-binary. But at the same time, I also realized the dysphoria I experienced within my own body. For example, not having boobs, even though... Also knowing what it feels like to have boobs, but also having a beard, hair growing out of my face, shaving it off, and being in bed and feeling my beard grow back against my blankets. It makes me feel very uncomfortable, and I've had this for a very long time, until the 8th of March this year, and I got the official diagnosis to start my medical transition. So, drag is the art of transformation. Life is transformation. The reality is transformation. Last but not least, in 2020, I participated in the Dutch franchise of RuPaul's Drag Race, named Drag Race Holland. And there's one episode, the fifth episode, I believe, where they ask all the contestants to take a family member and transform them into the full fantasy. So I was calling my parents and I knew my mom would be a perfect mom of Mama Queen. You know, she was wearing my dresses before and... But I also knew that worldwide there never had been 
a dad supporting their queer kids on national television. So I asked my dad to participate in Drag Race Holland and get in full drag as the first dad ever to support their queer kid in full drag. I transformed my dad into a beautiful drag queen. My dad transformed himself from an ordinary man into a hero. Yes. And to finish my talk, I quote RuPaul herself, we are all born naked and the rest is drag. <laughs>